Well, in 1947, I was approached by ICI, Imperial Chemicals Industry. Would I be interested in doing farm costings? And uh, I've always been quite keen on keeping records of one sort and another. And uh, they said that they would uh, analyse the various enterprises on the farm, uh, like uh, poultry keeping, keeping those hens, uh, and sheep, and uh, livestock rearing, and of course dairy cows, see how profitable each enterprise was. I say I would soon come up with a supply. Yes, they suggested more fertilizer, more grass, more cows, more profit. Quite simple for them. It was quite a contrast really as you looked over the hedge and you saw the neighbour's farm was a lighter green ours with the fertiliser was a deeper green and showed that you know the grass was growing quicker yes it made things much easier for me yes and of course the grass grew so quickly and so fast that the poor old, at that time, turned them weeds that didn't produce grass, they were lost. All the geraniums, the, um, the other um, herbs, yes, herbs, if you like, they were all lost within three or four years. Although I do believe that if you uh, gave over using fertilizers, Ultimately, those herbs may well come back, but we never got as far as that. We kept up the fertilizer. They told us, well, all right, we knew, <laughs> but they told us that haymaking in this climate was really not, not suitable, and. Um, to use fertilizer uh, would produce lush grass that is quickly grown and all right contains a certain amount of nitrogen likely but very very almost impossible to make into hay in our climate therefore that's where they suggested silage making the, the fertilizer and the silage had to go together and um, that's where we, we first got into, well, silage making, if you like. The silage was um, cut that first year into a clump, we called it, a clump of silage. It was carried with a fork to each individual cow, and it was jolly hard work. So what I did, I bought a tractor, and um, we put a book rake on it. Brings it to a clump, uh, and then it was still fed to cattle, but that was hard work still. So they suggested a silage pit, where you can put all this grass into a silage pit. Now this was in the farmyard and the cows would come and eat it but um, they were then able to be loose housed where they could go, well it was in our case it was into the barn to lay down on straw and then those cows could walk out and feed the face of the silage clump that was really the best improvement that we really did. Oh yes, yes, I was very well pleased, very well pleased. And the neighbours began to look over the fence and think, well, there might be something in this. It was about that time when uh, 
but it would be about 1964-65 uh, when uh, you know we really got going and everybody else was interested. Well, ICI began to bring uh, just an odd carload of farmers around the farm just to have a look. And um, they were in ICI were able to, um, well, encourage farmers to follow, all right, my system of buying <laughs> more fertilizer, which they would make profit on, I'm sure they would. Well, ICI got to bring in more and more farmers and I think they realised that they've got to really do something big. And that's what they did. There was a four or five costed farmers within uh, Cumberland and Westmoreland and within, I think it would be a period of um, two or three weeks, they would have a really big demonstration. In fact, uh, I believe uh, ours was in 1966, I think, if I remember right. And it was really very well organised by ICI. There would be something like 400 farmers there, I was told. Uh, unbelievable, really. But um, there must have been an interest in what we were doing. There really must. The uh, higher farms uh, began to take an interest as well because uh, at that time there was one or two bad summers where they were making some very poor quality hay and they were trying to look at a better system as we did, what, say, 10 or 12 years earlier. And uh, I think that would be where this country would lose a lot what uh, is today called the good hay meadows, particularly in the uh, uplands. They got far more herbs in the meadows than we did. But uh, in those days, there was not the same concern about the valuable hay meadows that there is today. Other people, I'm afraid, were very critical, um, destroying the, the old meadows that have grown there for generations and generations. And there you are destroying them almost within three years. Yes, that was the criticism that I got. The partridge, we lost them ultimately, but um, why, I don't know. Because suddenly you realised, oh, we don't have a covey of partridge now. And as uh, we used, you know, about the 50s, we'd have a covey, we've always had a little covey of partridge. But um, I don't know why the tuits went either. No, no, you see, all right. It is quite possible that we were cutting our grass much earlier than we were haymaking and possibly, without knowing it, we would be destroying the nests for the tuits. But that's the only thing I can think of is that they were lost within the early signs making system against the old haymaking system. It was the climatic conditions in, uh, well, in Westmoreland anyway, 
where you couldn't make hay uh, because, uh, well, yes, you, your good summers and your bad summers, but the bad summers were really, uh, really made very poor quality hay, which meant that you had to buy extra food for cattle and that, of course, reduced your profit considerably. But a good hay making year, if we could make good hay every year, I don't think anybody had ever gone into silage making. <laughs>